Hey guys, welcome back to How to Build a Blog with Laravel. We're cruising right along and this is part number 10 where we start learning about CRUD. <laughs> it's literally called CRUD and this is the essence of every um, application that we do. Now that we're starting to act, we, in the last episode we created a model that handled our posts and little did you know that posts actually follow something called um, resource management or CRUD. Okay, now CRUD is an acronym we use throughout web programming all over the place. And when you build web applications, you're gonna realize that everything you do is based around this concept of CRUD. Now, after the break, we're gonna learn what CRUD is and we're gonna go ahead and get started and get it set up in our application so we can start creating these blog posts once and for all. Okay, so as I teased you before, this episode is based on a concept called CRUD, and CRUD is all about managing resources in our application. Now think about any web application. It could be a social network, it could be a blog, it could be a to-do list. All of these focus around a certain resource, and the web application is simply our way of managing that resource. In the case of a social network, we're, we're managing status updates. It's status updates of our own, of our friends, of everything, and but that's the main focus is managing these um, status updates. And we have a web application that allows us to view them and to create new ones and to delete old ones and so forth. And that's where CRUD comes in. Let's take a look at the to-do list. Again, it's all focused around tasks. We either create a task, we're looking at tasks, we're deleting tasks, we're editing them. Once again, the resource here is tasks. In this case, we're working on a blog application, so blog posts are the, the fundamental resource that we're managing. Now, what is this CRUD that I keep talking about? Well, it's a fancy acronym, which is every letter in here stands for something new. And this acronym, CRUD, is spelled C-R-U-D, CRUD. Now, what does it stand for? Well, it's how you manage resources. You do one of four things with every resource you have. You're either going to be doing C, create, you're creating new resource. In the case of the blog post, blog application, it's blog posts you're creating. Um, you're going to read is the R for in CRUD. Um, you're reading or showing or looking at or viewing a specific blog post. In a to-do list, you might look at a specific to-do item or a specific status in a social network. Um, the U of CRUD stands for update, which means update, edit, that kind of thing. Sometimes you need to take an existing resource and make a change to it and save that again into the database. That's updating a resource. That's the U. And the last one, as you could guess, is D for destroy or delete. We commonly use the term destroy in programming, but it's the exact same thing. We just mean delete. We mean to remove the resource so it no longer exists. So that is CRUD, guys. And that's what we're gonna be doing in this episode is setting CRUD up in our application. Now, we talked about in the last episode how we had a posts uh, model now, and we had a way of storing posts, right? We have a database table now. That's awesome. Well. We need now a way for the user to basically create a post, read a post, update a post, or delete a post. And that's what we're going to focus on now, is kind of getting that little web of CRUD set up. Now, with any resource, just like how we have a model that handles all of our posts, we should probably have, you guessed it, a controller that handles our posts, right? And so let's go ahead and create a controller that can handle these CRUD, app, these CRUD um, applications um, for our resource, okay? So what we're gonna be focusing on is a um, posts controller. So we can actually, in the last time we made a controller, we made it manually. We actually created a blank file, we saved it with the correct name, and we actually created it from scratch, right? 
Well, I gave you an awesome secret in the last video or two videos ago. We actually made a model, but we didn't have to create it from scratch, didn't, did we? We could actually use the terminal to have Artisan just create it for us. And that's what we're gonna do with this controller. We're gonna learn to create a controller now, but have Artisan make it for us, all right? I always make you guys do the hard work first and then show you the shortcuts. Okay, so if I come over here to our terminal, make sure that you're in your blog application, okay? So if you are if you just opened up the terminal, you haven't had it open in a while, you need to use the cd command and you need to get into, um, if it's in your sites folder, you need to get in there and then into your blog folder. So I'm in my folder for blog. You should be able to type ls and you should see your Laravel application. That's how you know you're in the right place, okay? Also make sure your server is not running. Um, someone contacted me earlier and couldn't get this working. Um, the make command and that's because their server was running if you do PHP artisan serve You're gonna get something like this and every time you refresh you might get it'll say like Get and then favicon.ico that those are requests on your server um, And this is actually taking up all of your terminal Okay, so while your server is running you need to do one of two things in order to continue doing other commands in your terminal you either need to quit the server or you need to open up a new window or a new tab to run this in okay so i recommend doing a new window or a new tab because that way you can continue to run in the background you don't have to keep restarting your server um, and in order to do that on windows with terminal you can just do command t and when, when you do command t you can see that this tab is still running our server but this tab is in our blog folder and um, it's ready to actually accept commands now you could obviously create a new window or you can just quit the server. In case I haven't mentioned this before, in order to quit the server, you need to do control C. When you do control C, it quits the server. And once again, you're gonna get um, this where you can start actually doing other um, commands like the one we're about to do. Okay, so let's go back to the, um, uh, the command to create a controller. You guys remember how we created a um, model, right? We did PHP artisan, obviously. We did PHP artisan make, and then we did model, and then the name of our model, which was post, okay? Now we also added a cool um, uh, flag on the end here to have it create a migration for us as well. And so that's kind of how we did the, the, the last one. Well, this one's almost identical, only except other than model, we're not gonna create a model, we're actually creating a controller. So PHP artisan make, controller, we need the name of our controller. The convention for making controllers is to use the singular version with controller at the end in camel case, kind of like this. So in this case, we're making a controller to handle our posts, right? All the posts. So we're gonna call it post controller, just like that. that that's the name of our controller. And then we can go ahead and click enter and it will create an empty controller. Or just like we did last time, we can do pass in a flag. And remember how I was talking about um, handling resources and doing CRUD? Well, we can tell Laravel that we're making a, a CRUD controller. And all you have to do, to do in order to have it do this is pass in a flag with double dash, 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 resource. And this creates a resource controller, which is different than, a, it's the exact same thing as a normal controller, but it gives us a whole bunch of, uh, the legwork has already been done because it knows to create basic CRUD commands. Let's go ahead and click enter on this and see what happens. So I'm gonna click enter. You can see it says controller was created successfully. That's a good sign. Let's head over to our Sublime or our text editor and let's take a look at it. Now I've been quizzing you guys from the beginning. You should know like the back of your hand where controllers are saved. So think about it, where are they saved? Go there right now. Okay, if you're still with me, you gotta remember this. We go to app and then HTTP and then controllers. And we should have a controller called post controller um, now that we have we had the terminal create one for us. Now, as you can see, this is way more advanced than our last controller that we had. It automatically created a whole bunch of functions for us and these are all CRUD operations that we're gonna be using. And it even tells you here in this um, comments what it's for. So you can see here displaying a listing of the resource. In this case, the resource is a post. So this will show all of our posts, right? With the index command. The index command will show all of our posts. This will be really good. We could just leverage maybe this for the home page, 
or um, you could also use this to edit the posts. Um, next, we've got the create. This is um, to show a form to that creates a new resource. So this is if we want to create a new blog post. That's awesome. Um, we can obviously store the blog post. This is after we go to the create view and we submit a form. We need something to process that form and save it into the database or store it into the database. And that's where the store comes in. Um, if we need to look at a specific blog post, we can do show. And then if we need to edit the blog post, we've got something for edit. Um, and then once we, if we need to save an edit, then we use the update, which is updating the edit into the database. And then finally we have destroy at the end. So we have all of the operations we need in order to perform CRUD or create, read, update, or delete our blog posts, okay? So we're well on our way being set up with CRUD. The last thing we need to do is create a um, create routes for all of these different things we have. Since we've already got actions created for them, let's go ahead and get the routes set up to get them working. Now, some of these are obviously gonna be posts. Um, for example, when we create a blog post, um, we're actually, all we're doing here is just displaying a, uh, a view that has a form. And then we're gonna submit that form, and now we need to post, right? We need to do an HTTP request that's a post request, not a get request. So like store needs to be a um, post request and not a get or a delete request. Likewise, our um, update command needs to be a patch request, okay? A patch is another HTTP verb that we use, um, but it's different than get. It's um, similar to post, but it's a special kind that's specifically for updating information, and that's the past. Uh, the patch, I mean. It's called the patch request. So, And then obviously destroy has its own as well. There's a destroy um, or delete method in HTTP as well. So we need to do all these things, but luckily Laravel makes it super easy. Let's head over to our routes file and I'll show you how easy it is. Let's come over here to routes. Um, remember that routes are just under app and then HTTP and then routes. You can see we have three routes right here. So now we need to go ahead and create routes for all of those functions that were in our resource controller, but it's easy. We can actually do it with one line because route resources are such a common thing to manage. There's a simple one line way of doing this. We do route, but instead of get, instead of post, instead of patch, we just type resource, telling Laravel that we're managing a resource. And so it already knows what to expect, to expect all of those commands that are already in our controller. Now, obviously we need to pass in a few pieces of information for Laravel. What we need to do is first is the URL. Well, we're gonna actually namespace all of these under the posts um, uh, URL. So if you think about it, we're gonna have our, our URL um, example.com slash posts slash create or slash posts slash new or slash posts slash destroy and stuff like that. So that's what we need that, that, that um, um, item right there and that's gonna be posts. And so that's what we tell it first of all right here is gonna be, these are all part of the posts. And then we need to tell it the controller to use. In this case, we have a controller called po post controller. And so we just tell it post controller and we save. And now we should be able to take advantage of all of those routes. They should be working automatically. Okay, so I'm gonna show you another cool trick on how to make sure that all of those routes are working. Now we currently have these, we have the three we obviously know about that are the contact about and the slash, but then this is creating a whole bunch behind the scenes. How do we know what it's created? Well, if we come back over to our terminal, we can actually list all of the routes that Laravel currently knows about. And in order to do that, we obviously use the PHP artisan command again. And this time we're gonna type routes and then list. And this will list all of the routes in our application. Let's go ahead and click enter. Oh, I messed up. It's not plural routes, it's singular routes. So this is an error. I want to. I don't want to take away these errors. I want you guys to see that even I encounter these errors. Um, there are minor mistakes you can make here and there. And this is basically saying is, I don't know what you mean by routes. So um, I'm gonna click the up arrow and it brings back exactly what I typed last. If you click the up arrow, 
and then I'm gonna come over here and change routes to just route, okay? So it's PHP artisan route and then list. Click enter, and now we're getting a list of all of the routes in our application. Now, we already know about slash, so if you go get slash, that's gonna take you to the home page. And it even tells you here, it goes to pages controller and then get index. Um, if you do a get request to the about page to slash about, it goes to pages controllers get about. If you do a get request to contact, we know this obviously goes to contact. Now here's the new ones. Look at all of these that were created from that one line of route resource. One line got us all of these resources that now we can manage this resource really easily. We have CRUD for the resource. So you can see if we do a POST request to POSTS, plural, then that's going to store a new item. Okay, so that's really good to know. Also, if we do a GET request to POSTS, then it's going to give us the index. So, uh, sorry, POST controller index that's going to show all of our POSTS. Post slash create, a get request to post slash create will obviously show the form for creating a new post. And again, it tells you here, it goes to the create action. And then we have put or patch um, to post. And then this little thing here is the ID for our post. So we'll pass, we'll do post slash one will be for, ID, for post number one and so forth. Everything will have that primary ID in our database and this will represent that ID. So that's what this these curly brackets stand for, is it's expecting a variable in here, and that variable will be passed into our controller. So that's a cool thing we have to look forward to that we're gonna start working with. Um, anyway, we can view a certain post by just doing a get request to post slash and then the number, the ID number for the post, or we can delete a post by doing a delete method to post slash and then the number of the, po of the post we're trying to access. So. All of this is available here. Oh, sorry, the last one, if we do a get request to post slash the number slash edit, then we'll edit that specific post, okay? So here we've gone ahead and we've created everything to set up the CRUD in our application so that we can actually start working with the posts. We can create them, soon we're gonna be able to read them and update them and delete them. And this will allow us full control of what we expect in a blog application. We expect to be able to manage our blog posts, obviously, and now this has set up everything that we need in order to do that. We have a function and we have a route for doing all of these, for creating them, for updating them, and so forth. So now all we need to do is systematically go through here and start filling this in so all these functions are available to our users, all right? The next video is where we're gonna start that process. And we're gonna do that, but with the create command. So we're gonna create, fill in the create so we can create a new blog post, okay? I'll see you guys there. Hey, I hope you guys are enjoying this series. Now, if you're new and you found um, this is kind of the first episode that you're watching and you're wondering what's going on, this is part of a longer series. So if you want to watch that full series from the beginning, this is a series focused around absolute beginners getting into Laravel for the first time. We take it slow, we take it steady, and we make sure that you really fully understand this, um, all these concepts as we move on. It's the most in-depth tutorial on YouTube, I can assure you. You can start watching that video over here. It takes you to a playlist that has every single episode in order, and you can really get caught up to where we are now. Obviously, for those of you that are watching along, make sure you're subscribed if you're not. Um, if you have any questions, any concerns about anything in this video, obviously remember that I've got code snippets down in the description. So all the code snippets I put into the terminal are all down there in that description. Any links that I um, link to are gonna be down in, this, in the description. There weren't any in here, but just know that's where they're gonna be if there are any. And then um, also, if you have any questions or you get stuck, don't forget that you can reach out to me either um, in the comments below or out, reach me out on Twitter. Both of them work really, really well. Um, I respond to Twitter basically right away. And then comments, I actually check them um, throughout the day, usually three, four, five times a day. It just depends on how busy I am or it's pretty fast. But anyway, um, if you comment down in the comments, not only can I help you, but maybe another person that's um, watched this video can help you as well. So don't forget to do that. And obviously if you find it helpful, this video helpful, liking is awesome. Um, all right, guys. Well, thanks for staying tuned. Thanks for learning along with me. And um, 
I will see you guys in the next video.